2007 and 2008, there were once again spikes in global famine. There were hunger revolts in over 30 countries. A further 115 million people fell into extreme poverty, caused by a drastic rise in food prices. Between 2006 and 2008, the Food and Agriculture Organization's Food Price Index registered a price increase of 71% for the most essential foodstuffs. This increase was as high as 126% for rice and grain. Afterwards, the prices fell, only to rise once again. By the beginning of 2011, they had attained heights already seen in 2008. The hardest hit by these price hikes are people in developing and emerging countries. While average households in industrialized countries spend about 10 to 20 percent on food, spending reaches 60 to 80 percent in households of less developed lands. As a result, price adjustments have a devastating effect in these regions. In line with these statistics, a price increase of 71 percent in basic foodstuffs would lead to approximately 10 percent in additional expenses in industrialized households. In contrast, a developing household would be saddled with nearly 50 percent in additional expenses. The following reasons are frequently cited for the food price hikes in 2007 and 2008. Rise in demand, the decline of the dollar, agricultural neglect, restriction on exports in key producer countries, production of biofuels, high oil and fertilizer prices, and bad harvests. The current price rise could initially be explained by harvest losses over the past few months in Russia, Australia, and other producer countries. But the extreme price peaks cannot be explained by the factors listed above alone. Many observers cite a further factor, ever stronger speculation on commodities markets. Foodstuffs are not only bought and sold directly, but are also subject to forward buying, a process in which future harvests are traded. A farmer who is not sure how much his harvest will be worth can protect himself on the futures market from price fluctuations. In the simplest form, the farmer can contractually stipulate a certain price with a miller as well as the future delivery date. These agreements to purchase or sell a commodity for delivery in the future are called futures on stock exchanges and are otherwise referred to as forwards. To make it easier for the farmer and miller to trade on the futures market, intermediaries act as hedgers. They contact the farmer, for example, and offer to take over his losses if the price of grain drops below a certain margin. However, if it rises significantly, they can pocket the profits. The hedger also charges the farmer a fee for his effort and risk. He offers the same deal to the miller. This means that the price of grain rises slightly overall, but both farmer and miller are assured planning reliability. This type of speculator is often well-versed with the food commodity market and is generally considered to be a stabilizing force on the market. Further speculators associate with the hedgers, who, depending upon the willingness to assume risk, distribute or multiply the risks and opportunities of the original contracts with further futures, forwards, and other mechanisms of the financial market. For a long time, there were relatively few speculators on food commodities markets. However, the situation has changed completely. On the one hand, laws have become increasingly lax over the past 10 years. In the USA, for example, banks and funds have increasingly been allowed to trade on the futures markets. On the other hand, this occurred because the property markets collapsed in the wake of the world economic crisis. Speculators were looking for a new market, and many of them were driven to agriculture. This influx of new speculators on the market includes hedge funds and index funds. Index funds concentrate on replicating the physical market by purchasing enormous quantities of futures. However, it is generally accepted that they drive prices upward because they mainly buy futures, which gamble on rising prices. The widely discussed hedge funds proceed differently. They speculate through various means on the financial market and employ diverse strategies, which allow them to reap profits even when the market falls. This new kind of futures speculation is now playing an increasing role in Europe, particularly on the London and Paris stock exchanges. However, it is certainly most developed in the USA. Here, the proportion of producers, consumers, and dealers involved in future contracts decreased from 39% in the year 2000 to 15% by the beginning of 2008. The ratio of U.S. wheat's futures to physical U.S. wheat production has changed outright. In 2002, the number of futures was 11 times larger. By 2004, 16 times. And in 2007, 30 times. 
The influx of speculators means that even more contracts are signed that have nothing to do with the conditions of the real economy. Some speculators are starting to manipulate the markets in order to generate profit. The majority merely gamble on the actions of other speculators or exploit short-term tendencies. As a result, minor price shifts become major trends. Speculation provokes price spikes, which mainly profit the speculators themselves. The speculator influx has an opposite effect to the price stabilizing effect of fewer speculators. Through rising speculation with future contracts, food commodities become less of a utility value and more of a financial investment. This is known as financialization. The prices increasingly become affected by the fluctuations of the financial market and are no longer affected by the needs of the people, farmers, and business establishments. Following negative experiences with the liberalization of markets, the U.S. has already begun to regulate its markets more strongly. It was decided to force off-market trading back onto the stock exchanges, to introduce restrictions on speculators, and to oblige them to provide more information about their activities. This topic is now also being discussed in the EU. The European stock exchanges are currently under-regulated. Ever stronger financial speculation threatens to create further bubbles. For this reason, we need stricter laws, stronger trading regulations for speculators through price and position limits, and greater transparency.